Hey, it's Darlene, and today I'm going to play with this box that I have labeled glitter, but it has sequins in here, it has confetti, it has beads, just a random assortment of things. And um, the reason why I decided to play with it is I just purchased a, a package of shaker bits that were Halloween themed. Don't know why. Um, I know that's so much further in the future, but I just thought it was super cute. So when I went to go put it away, I realized I had four other confettis that were Halloween themed. And I thought, oh my goodness, I really need to use what's in this box. So with St. Patrick's Day coming up, I decided I'm going to make some shaker cards um, using my own shaker mix. Um, so that's why you see me grabbing a whole bunch of different green items. I'm going to complement it with silver and some white and clear elements. So again, you'll see me pulling all those items. A lot of these things I've had in my stash forever. Most of the glitter was gifted to me um, either by family, friends. You know, I'm sure we all have that one friend that says, oh, I bought these things. I'll never use it. Do you want it? Um, or I bought these at a yard sale. <laughs> seemed like a good price. I won't use it, but will you? I always say yes, because I always figured at some point I'm probably going to use it. And in this case, I am. So um, like I said, you'll see me grabbing a lot of these green things. And I'm going to be mixing the shaker mix <laughs> in this pink tray. And that pink tray I purchased from Queen and Company. And that was something that I purchased at an expo when expos were a thing. Hopefully one day we'll return to those. And I don't do a whole lot of um, embossing, but that was the main reason why I bought this tray was um, the way it was demonstrated was to use embossing powder. And then it was just an easier cleanup and definitely need easy cleanup when you're working with glitter. So um, I'm just going through the different packages that I have. Again, I've purchased a lot of them. A lot of them were gifted uh, and I'm just spilling them all together. White, light green, dark green. Um, you'll see me use some silver. Um, I kind of use the same thought process of the stars in there. There's some silver stars and there's also some little tiny white ones. But um, I'm just throwing things together. I, I just figured it's green. It's going to be pretty. One thing I wanted to show you is you see in that bottom right, in, in the bottom right side of that um, tray is a little pink spoon that was not purchased from Queen & Company. That was actually a 31 Flavors sample spoon. Um, yeah, folks, if you're like me, you know, we keep everything. And I just, I probably kept it in my pocket. And then one day just said, oh, I'll put it in my craft room. And it worked out perfect. And you'll see me scooping some beads in a minute. And so it just worked out perfect. I mean, why go out and buy little scooper spoons when you can literally uh, get it free? Plus with a little bit of ice cream on top, right? So those green beads that are over to the left, those were purchased from my local dollar store. I'm just amazed at how much crafting um, items they have at the Dollar Tree now. So just a little um, promo for them. If you haven't been to a Dollar Tree in a while, definitely take a peek. They've got a lot of really great stuff. Um, so the thing I like about this tray are, is that funnel that they have. They have two on both ends. One's a little thicker, which is the one I'm using, and one's a little thinner. So if you're doing fine, finer um, uh, elements like a like an embossing powder that would be a good one to funnel it back into your jar so I'm pretty much done with this I'm just showing that off and then right now I'm going to start my card and what you see now is I cut out these portions with my Cricut and you see that double layer I did the green for the top layer and then I did a circle which is a little bit bigger than the shamrocks that I cut and the reason why I did that is I thought it would be a lot easier to add the phone tape to that round surface versus the sharp points here and there with the shamrocks as far as the shaker portion of it. Um, if you haven't made a shaker card I'll, I'll try to make this really simple but Basically, I use um, transparency because I had bought a pack from a yard, spell, yard sale years ago, and so it works for me. But you can use acetate or any clear, ob um, clear paper type source that's going to block the shakers from falling out. Um, when you add the foam tape, I like to double it up because it gives you a bigger, uh, higher well to put your little shaker bits in. You don't have to, but when I do, I will um, stick the tape to itself so I don't have to cut it and then put on another layer later. This works really well. Another thing that uh, tip is if you're doing a circular shape like I am here, 
is to remove the backing sheet from the adhesive on both sides. You know, normally you would keep the, the backing tape on the top so that it you're kind of blocking the sticky part. But by removing it, you're um, allowing the, the foam tape to bend more easily. And so you're able to uh, manipulate it into a circle. And since my first cut wasn't long enough, I added that second. But you need to make sure that the points, if there is, if you are using two different... Um, adhesive strips that they are so close together that there's no way that anything's going to be able to seep out. Um, so because the whole um, backing or the panel is going to be on the card, I put that rest of that double-sided tape or the double of the double-sided tape all over because it would be a, uh, the same level when I, when I adhered it down. And another tip is I always put another layer of the acetate or transparency on the back side. And the reason why I do that is I used to put the pattern paper or the card base on top, you know, and to flip it on. And I would never get it straight. So that just helps a little bit. And you see there that I messed up. I put that shaker card or that shaker, the circle element part upside down. So I had to cut the cardstock down. And I'm just basically keeping that in because I want to show you that not every project turns out exactly how you like, but it doesn't mean you need to stop and give up. So um, I just added adhesive to the shamrock shape and just adhered it directly on top of that circle so that you couldn't see the circle. And that's why um, I had to cut that cardstock or that card base down. And I just used scraps to, um, to add the um, sentiment. And now I decided to add some twine to the top of that. And thankfully, I did not record how long it took me to tie that twine on. But the funny thing is, is I, I tied it on and I just did it in a knot, which took me forever, trimmed down the edges. And then I thought, oh, how super cute would it be if that sentiment was on there like a tag versus anywhere else on that card. So you see me now and knotting my knot. Yeah, I probably could have just used more twine and used that for another project. But I guess I was on a mission to make this work no matter what. So I tie, I punched a hole in that top left corner um, to make it a tag and then I used that same twine to tie that knot and it took a little bit because there wasn't as much as much excess but I was successful and then I just tied a double or triple looped bow to add to that and I just adhered it with a glue dot. I didn't show that either because that was painful to watch and now I'm just double checking making sure I've got the card correct and I put some adhesive and I just adhered it to the card base. So there you go that's the finished card. I thought, and then I thought, no, it needed something. So as usual, my little something always seems to be the color silk from Fun Stamper's Journey slash, oh my goodness, what are they called now? Um, spell binders. But anyhow, so I added some green and then I added gold, which I love. And I hope you do too. I hope you love this project. I hope um, you get a chance to make a shaker card. I hope my tips help you. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I will also have all this information on my blog post, which will also be down in the information box. And I hope you get a chance to look over there. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I'll definitely answer them. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.